This is the message from the Lord that came to Jeremiah during the tenth year that Zedekiah was king of Judah. The tenth year of Zedekiah was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar. At that time, the army of the king of Babylon was surrounding the city of Jerusalem, and Jeremiah was under arrest in the courtyard of the guard. This courtyard was at the palace of the king of Judah. King Zedekiah of Judah had put Jeremiah in prison in that place. Zedekiah didn't like the things Jeremiah prophesied. Jeremiah had said, This is what the Lord says, I will soon give the city of Jerusalem to the king of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar will capture this city. King Zedekiah of Judah will not escape from the army of the Babylonians, but he will surely be given to the king of Babylon. And Zedekiah will speak to the king of Babylon face to face. He will see him with his own eyes. The king of Babylon will take Zedekiah to Babylon. Zedekiah will stay there until I have punished him. This message is from the Lord. If you fight against the army of the Babylonians, you will not succeed. While Jeremiah was a prisoner, he said, This message from the Lord came to me. This was the message. Jeremiah, your cousin, Hanamel, will come to you soon. He is the son of your uncle Shalom. Hanamel will say to you, Jeremiah, buy my field near the town of Anathoth. Buy it because you are my nearest relative. It is your right and your responsibility to buy that field. Then it happened just as the Lord said. My cousin Hanamel came to me in the courtyard of the guard. Hanamel said to me, Jeremiah, buy my field near the town of Anathoth in the land of the tribe of Benjamin. Buy that land for yourself because it is your right to buy it and own it. So I knew that this was a message from the Lord. I bought the field at Anathoth from my cousin Hanamel. I weighed out 17 shekels of silver for him. I signed the deed and had a copy of the deed sealed up. I got some men to witness what I had done, and I weighed out the silver on the scales. Then I took the sealed copy of the deed, which contained the demands and limits of my purchase, and the copy that was not sealed. I gave the deed to Barak, son of Neriah, the son of Masiah. I did this while my cousin Hanamel and the other witnesses were there. They also signed the deed. There were also many people of Judah sitting in the courtyard who saw me give the deed to Barak. With all the people watching, I said to Barak, This is what the Lord All-Powerful, the God of Israel, says. Take both copies of the deed, the sealed copy and the copy that was not sealed, and put them in a clay jar. Do this so that these deeds will last a long time. The Lord All-Powerful, the God of Israel, says, In the future, my people will once again buy houses, fields, and vineyards in the land of Israel. After I gave the deed to Barak, son of Neriah, I prayed to the Lord. Lord God, with your great power, you made the earth and the sky. There is nothing too hard for you to do. You are loyal and kind to thousands of people, but you also bring punishment to children for their father's sins. Great and powerful God, your name is the Lord All-Powerful. You plan and do great things. You see everything that people do. You give a reward to those who do good things. And you punish those who do bad things. You give them what they deserve. You have been doing powerful miracles in the land of Egypt until now, in Israel and elsewhere. You are the one who made yourself as famous as you are today. You used powerful miracles and brought your people Israel out of Egypt. You used your own powerful hand to do this. Your power was amazing! You gave the Israelites this land that you promised to give to their ancestors long ago. It is a very good land filled with many good things. They came to this land and took it for their own. But they didn't obey you. They didn't follow your teachings or do what you commanded. So you made all these terrible things happen to them. And now the enemy has surrounded the city. They are building ramps so that they can get over the walls of Jerusalem and capture it. Because of war, hunger, and disease, the city of Jerusalem will fall to the Babylonian army. The Babylonians are attacking the city now. You said this would happen, and now you see it is happening. Lord God, all those bad things are happening, but now you are telling me, Jeremiah, buy the field with silver and choose some men to witness the purchase. You are telling me this while the Babylonian army is ready to capture the city. Why should I waste my money like that? 
Then this message from the Lord came to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, I am the Lord. I am the God of every person on the earth. You know that nothing is impossible for me. The Lord also said, I will soon give the city of Jerusalem to the Babylonian army and to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. The army will capture the city. The Babylonian army is already attacking the city of Jerusalem. They will soon enter the city and start a fire. They will burn down this city. There are houses in this city where the people of Jerusalem made me angry by offering sacrifices to the false god Baal on the housetops. And they poured out drink offerings to other idol gods. The Babylonian army will burn down those houses. I have watched the people of Israel and the people of Judah. Everything they do is evil. They have done evil things since they were young. The people of Israel have made me very angry because they worship idols that they made with their own hands. This message is from the Lord. From the time that Jerusalem was built until now, the people of this city have made me angry. This city has made me very angry, so I must remove it from my sight. I will destroy Jerusalem because of all the evil things the people of Israel and Judah have done. The people, their kings, leaders, and priests and prophets, the people of Judah, and the people of Jerusalem have all made me angry. They should have come to me for help, but they turned their backs to me. I tried to teach them again and again, but they would not listen to me. I tried to correct them, but they would not listen. They have made their idols, and I hate those idols. They put their idols in the temple that is called by my name, so they made my temple dirty. In the valley of Ben-Hinnom, they built high places to the false god Baal. They built those worship places so that they could burn their sons and daughters as sacrifices. I never commanded them to do such a terrible thing. I never even thought the people of Judah would do such a terrible thing. You people are saying, the king of Babylon will capture Jerusalem. He will use war, hunger, and disease to defeat this city. But this is what the Lord, the God of the people of Israel, says. I have forced the people of Israel and Judah to leave their land. I was very angry with them, but I will bring them back to this place. I will gather them from the land where I forced them to go. I will bring them back to this place. I will let them live in peace and safety. The people of Israel and Judah will be my people and I will be their God. I will give them the desire to be one, united people. They will have one goal, to worship me all their lives. They and their children will want to do this. I will make an agreement with the people of Israel and Judah that will last forever. In this agreement, I will never turn away from them. I will always be good to them. I will make them want to respect me. Then they will never turn away from me. They will make me happy. I will enjoy doing good to them. And I will surely plant them in this land and make them grow. I will do this with all my heart and soul. This is what the Lord says. I have brought this great disaster to the people of Israel and Judah. In the same way, I will bring good things to them. I promise to do good things for them. You people are saying, this land is an empty desert. There are no people or animals here. The Babylonian army defeated this country. But in the future, people will once again buy fields in this land. They will use their money and buy fields. They will sign and seal their agreements. They will witness the people signing their deeds. They will again buy fields in the land where the tribe of Benjamin lives, in the area around Jerusalem, in the towns of the land of Judah, in the hill country, in the western foothills, and in the area of the southern desert. This will happen because I will bring them back home. This message is from the Lord. While Jeremiah was still locked up in the courtyard of the guards, the message from the Lord came to him a second time. The Lord made the earth, and he keeps it safe. The Lord is his name. He says, Judah, pray to me, and I will answer you. I will tell you important secrets. You have never heard these things before. The Lord is the God of Israel. This is what he says about the houses in Jerusalem and about the palaces of the kings of Judah. The enemy will pull these houses down. They will build ramps up to the top of the city walls. They will use swords and fight the people in these cities. The people in Jerusalem have done many bad things. I am angry with them. I have turned against them, so I will kill many people there. 
the Babylonian army will come to fight against Jerusalem. There will be many dead bodies in the houses in Jerusalem. But then I will heal the people in that city. I will let them enjoy peace and safety. I will make good things happen to Judah and Israel again and make them strong as in the past. They sinned against me, but I will wash away that sin. They fought against me, but I will forgive them. Then Jerusalem will be a wonderful place. The people will be happy. People from other nations will praise it when they hear about the good things happening there. They will hear about the good things I am doing for Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. You people say that your country is an empty desert. There are no people or animals living there. It is now quiet in the streets of Jerusalem and in the towns of Judah, but it will be noisy there soon. There will be sounds of joy and happiness. There will be the happy sounds of a bride and groom. There will be the sounds of people bringing their gifts to the Lord's temple. They will say, praise the Lord all powerful. The Lord is good. His faithful love will last forever. They will say this because I will again do good things to Judah. It will be as it was in the beginning. This is what the Lord said. The Lord all powerful says, this place is empty now. There are no people or animals living there but there will be people in all the towns of Judah. There will be shepherds, and there will be pastures where they will let their flocks rest. Shepherds will count their sheep as the sheep walk in front of them. They will be counting their sheep all around the country, in the hill country, in the western foothills, in the Negev, and in all the other towns of Judah. This message is from the Lord. I made a special promise to the people of Israel and Judah. The time is coming when I will do what I promised. At that time, I will make a good branch grow from David's family. That branch will do what is good and right for the country. When he rules, Judah will be saved. The people of Jerusalem will live in safety. This will be his name. The Lord makes things right for us. The Lord says, someone from David's family will always sit on the throne and rule as the family of Israel. And there will always be priests from the family of Levi. They will always stand before me and offer burnt offerings and sacrifice grain offerings and give sacrifices to me. This message from the Lord came to Jeremiah. The Lord says, I have an agreement with day and night. I agreed that they would continue forever. You cannot change that agreement. Day and night will always come at the right time. If you could change that agreement, then you could change my agreement with David and Levi. Then descendants from David would not be the kings, and the family of Levi would not be priest. But I will give many descendants to my servant David and to the tribe of Levi. They will be as many as the stars in the sky. No one can count all the stars, and they will be as many as the grains of sand on the seashore. No one can count the grains of sand. Jeremiah received this message from the Lord. Jeremiah, have you heard what the people are saying? They are saying, the Lord turned away from the two families of Israel and Judah. He chose those people, but now he does not even accept them as a nation. The Lord says, if my agreement with day and night does not continue, and if I had not made the laws for the sky and the earth, maybe I would leave those people. Then maybe I will turn away from Jacob's descendants. And then maybe I would not let David's descendants rule over the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But David is my servant, and I will be kind to those people. I will again cause good things to happen to them. In the eleventh year of exile, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. He said, Son of man, Tyre said bad things about Jerusalem. Hooray! The city gate protecting the people is destroyed. The city gate is open for me. The city of Jerusalem is ruined, so I can get plenty of valuable things out of it. So the Lord God says, I am against you, Tyre. I will bring many nations to fight against you. They will come again and again, like waves on a beach. The enemy soldiers will destroy the walls of Tyre and pull down her towers. I will also scrape the topsoil from her land. I will make Tyre a bare rock. Tyre will become a place by the sea for spreading fishing nets. I have spoken. The Lord God says, Tyre will be like the valuable things soldiers take in war. 
Her daughters on the mainland will be killed in battle. Then they will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Lord God says. I will bring an enemy from the north against Tyre. That enemy is Nebuchadnezzar, the great king of Babylon. He will bring a very large army. There will be horses, chariots, horse soldiers, and many other soldiers. They will be from many different nations. Nebuchadnezzar will kill your daughters on the mainland. He will build towers to attack your city. He will build a dirt road around your city and a dirt road leading up to the walls. He will bring the logs to break down your walls. He will use picks and break down your towers. There will be so many of his horses that the dust from them will cover you. Your walls will shake at the noise of horse soldiers, wagons, and chariots when the king of Babylon enters the city through your city gates. Yes, they will come into your city because its walls will be pulled down. The king of Babylon will come riding through your city. His horse's hooves will come pounding over your streets. He will kill your people with swords. The strong columns in your city will fall to the ground. Nebuchadnezzar's men will take away your riches. They will take the things you wanted to sell. They will break down your walls and destroy your pleasant houses. They will throw the wood and stones into the sea like garbage. So I will stop the sound of your happy songs. People will not hear your harps anymore. I will make you a bare rock. You will be a place by the sea for spreading fishing nets. You will not be rebuilt because I, the Lord, have spoken. This is what the Lord God said.